how, how are you how are you um how are you like really handling though this this time of isolation how are you how are you, how are you mentally how are you doing with it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, I think I spent the first two weeks really unhealthily, like devouring just like the news in any way I could. I would seriously spend every waking hour oscillating between uh, the New York Times and Facebook and Instagram, just kind of ping ponging as if somewhere someone's gonna, you know, have some answer that's gonna make life in, in this moment make sense. And then I just realized that that was just unhealthy. And so I found a, a healthier balance with my news intake and just taking it day by day. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Yeah. You know, I, I think you're right. Um, I, I try and ration myself to listening to the news first thing in the morning. And then, and only for about 15 minutes, because I found myself, at the beginning of this, literally like you, just wall to wall, you know, jumping between the BBC, CNN, you know, Fox. I, I love to hear what, how, how they see the world. On the other you side. Know, and I would be jumping, I know, I know, it's like, that, that's the hard work bit. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd be jumping to the Guardian and the New York Times. And then I realized that I was, I was just getting more and more depressed. The more I, the, the more I, I, I just sat in it, yeah. and so then I began to ration myself, because otherwise I think that um, that that, you know, I hate and hate is a strong word, but I I I hate fear, because I I think fear does something to our molecules, it it does something to the way we we breathe and the way we we dream and the way we, we, we speak to one another. And, um, and, 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 and so I've got to try and limit myself to, to, to the exposure of fear. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes absolute sense. It's debilitating. It's like you, I don't think anyone can be as creative or as um, just available spiritually and holistically because of fear. Uh, it's, it's been, it's been lonely, but I have found moments of joy in the solitude and with connecting. I've taken on a new skill that uh, I can do in my house with no one else, which is that I love music and I love dancing. So I got myself a little DJ board and I'm learning how to DJ at home. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate that. <laughs> yes, son. I, you and you DJ? know what? I, I, I'm also I'm really, I'm, I'm really happy about that because now I'm going to do it. I saw it the other day and I went, should I, should I? Should I, I recommend it. I rec now, do, you, do, you, do you DJ? I know you have like a party that you throw at your theater, but. Yeah, baby, I, I, I throw down. I mean, I don't DJ w uh, well. And I think, I think my children will probably say I DJ quite badly. <laughs> now and is the moment. I'm now's the you. time. It's so therapeutic. It's so beautiful. Just figuring out, I can't do transitions on stage. So now I'm figuring out transitions from song to song. It's a yeah. lot of fun. Man. I recommend it. Listen, I, 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 I think my childhood dreams, this is the time to <laughs> kind of put it out, you know, to kind of throw down with yes. some big dreams. And yeah. what about your art? How are you feeling about, how, how are you feeling about, when you next get to to practice your art, to have it, have where your mind is at about what kind of work you want to do on the on the flip side of this, have you been thinking about that shit? Not that you have to, but have you been thinking about it? I I had a moment where, well, I had some projects that were coming up, and then you know, one after another, they they fell through because of the moment that we're in. And um, I had decided at the beginning of the process that I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna work towards something. You know, we work on the things that are right like on the horizon and the horizon just kept moving further and further. So I was like, um, I don't think I can engage right now as a theater artist. I just, this is not my, my, my forum. And for me, like approximating the theatrical experience on a screen just isn't something that calls to me. So um, I've, I'm reading, I'm, I'm listening to music, I'm watching movies, I'm consuming rather than creating right now is, is what I've chosen to do. Um, and also like I, you know, I'm a freelance artist, so I'm able to do that. But I'm curious about you because you're an artist, but you're also running an institution. How have you navigated that for yourself? First of all, I'm blessed, right? I'm blessed that, that I, I, I can be an artist and, and, and a curator, um, you know, and run a theater. And I think, I think you know, it, it's been hard, um, but it's hard for everybody. 
you know, trying to look after the staff has been priority number one. Um, trying to use this time to also just think, because I don't know when I'm going to get this time again yeah. to, to not have the hours commute in the morning and the hours commute back and, and, and just think. And so uh, that's been my major challenge. I was ill for about two weeks. So I went down with some version of COVID where I didn't have the smell, I didn't have the cough, and I, I, I didn't have the temperature. And, um, and I remember just like, I mean, you know, doing 20 Zooms, and then in between every Zoom kind of going over to my sofa and falling asleep. Oh, my God. You know, in prep for the next one. Um, but, and I, but I remember being really frustrated with myself, going, come on, Kwame, this is thinking time. And, uh, and, and near the end of week two, when I was recovering, I then, I then began to, uh, to, to, to have thoughts. And so I've got a whiteboard that's just there. Uh -huh. and now filled with, um, with just musings, just, just thoughts about what kind of theatre I want when we come back, how light of foot we need to be today in order to not get bogged down in the, in the fear and the lack of data that exists mm -hmm. and, and, and be ready and nimble enough to regather the troops and create really good work when we know that we don't even know how we're going to be producing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When and how and are just like big how. questions. Mm -hmm. it's, it's big. Um, as an artist, I think I've, I've been really blessed in that I'm, I'm, I'm able to kind of go to work, go to the theater, do a kind of nine till seven, come home, say hello to the family, sleep for an hour, and then start to write. And then, and, and so I'm using that, that discipline where, um, you know, I, what we're calling isolation, when I was solely a writer, was probably how I lived my life. Uh -huh. You know, I would uh -huh. be upstairs in my garret. I would write sometimes for three weeks, not leave the house. I mean, I remember that really clearly. My children would come home from school and they'd be like, Dad, you've not left the house yet. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, like a ping pong table then in the backyard. And I'd really be, I couldn't wait for my kids to come home from school because then I'd go, great, we can play ping pong. And then that would be my <laughs> So I've kind of lived a version of this isolation only and by choice um, before. So, uh, so in, in an odd way, the isolation's not, not, not getting me. It is, it, is, it is trying to make sure that I use this time to really think, to really, um, to, to, to not have new ideas. There are no new ideas under the sun, but, but, but to have authentic ideas for this moment and the next one. When we leave this portal, I want to be able to say, oh, okay, that was the way it was. This is the way it is. Okay, I, I have a couple of tools. I think part of it is, is, is relinquishing ourselves from having responsibility, responsibility for knowing too much. Like we are, we are all relegated now to our own little corners, whatever that may be. And all we have to take care of is our little portion of the world that we're in. Like we have elected officials, we have politicians that, there are people thinking at that level. And so it, it be, doesn't behoove us to try and like engage in those macro thoughts, you know? Like, yes, stay informed. Yes, like, especially for you, like, you know, um, thinking about how an institution is going to, um, you know, you have to give it some thought, of course, because um, you have to engage with some kind of speculation, however, whatever the size of that, but still like, um, it's about the, the balance, right? So you have to balance that with your own, um, just staying with your own thoughts and just like taking the time to reflect for yourself. You know, what was, what's really interesting to me is, I, um, you know, I, I would describe myself as, as uh, having working class heritage. I, mean, I, I would still describe myself as working class, but, I, I, you know, for others, they may say that that's odd. But, um, you know, I come from a working class family. And, uh, and so I grew up watching my, you know, my, my mother and father, go to work and speak about clocking on and clocking off. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then when I was at college, I worked at McDonald's and you know, they were the kings, man, of making sure you clock on, making sure you clock off and you uh -huh. clock off on for your break and clock off for your break and you know, you live by those minutes. And I remember the very first time I got invited to the National Theatre Studio. And it was a scheme that they ran there where they just found really interesting writers. And they said, 
uh, this is how long ago it was, it was 15 years, 16 years ago, about like this. And, um, and they said, here's a phone, here's a computer, here's a desk, and here's an office. And we need nothing else from you. Just do what you want. Arrive when you want, go home when you want, leave, go downstairs and speak to people. What you want. I was like, you don't need a draft from me in three weeks. You don't need a new Correct. Give me the rules. <laughs> I need to clock on and clock off. And, uh, and they were like, no. And it was the first time in my life that I realized I was being given time to think. I didn't have to produce anything yeah. except for thoughts in my mind. I remember sitting there for two days going, what's going on, what's going on? You're not doing anything. And then sitting in, oh, I can have really interesting conversations with other artists who are in this building and that's a day's work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could sit in here and, 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 and call a friend and the inspiration and the energy that I've got from that, that's a day's work. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and that freed me. And so I, I keep coming back to that for this time. It is to continue to, 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 to give myself the cerebral space and energy to literally just debate with myself, debate with the world, and replenish. I've, I've got it. I've got it. If I may, my, my whiteboard. I'm going to try and pull my whiteboard because there was a thought. You said something a moment ago about what are you reading? What are you consuming? Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I, yes, I yes, yes. To, if I may, I'm, I mean, uh, it's. Uh, I've got. I've got to find <laughs> it. But I know. I know. It's. 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 It's very 20th century, right? <laughs> I Let's could put this on my iPad it and have it all, it all over <laughs> all my devices. Oh, I love this. There's something, um, there was something about writing it down. Oh, no, and now I'm not going to find it after I've made all of this noise and I've put it all in. Um, one second. There. It, it's coming, it's coming, I promise. Um, well, at least I think I promise. After all of that, I have to find it, don't I, really? Okay, great. Lovely. And, um, and, and, and I, 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 I read this, a friend sent it to me. And, it, it's, uh, and, and it says, um, this is the opportunity, or it, offer us, it offers us a chance for us to rethink the doomsday machine we have built for ourselves. Oof. Historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine a world anew. This one is no different. It is a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our arabice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us, or we can walk through lightly with little luggage, ready to imagine another world and ready to fight for it. Aaron Hati Roy. That's beautiful. That's so See, right? beautiful. Yeah, yeah, because it's about then forward motion, right? It's that, that idea of a portal, like we're actually moving towards something as opposed to, it's why whenever I hear pause, it's like we're not pausing and then unpausing. Like we're not going to like resume something. Like we're actually on a pathway to something else. It's like, it's more of a reset than a pause because what's actually going to, and, I, and we're actually living, like we're not not living right now. You know, yeah. we're not like in some kind of like cryonic state where we're going to wake ourselves up. We are actually living right now, you know? Oh, but no, listen, I just had to share that. I share that with everybody because I'm Thank like, you no, it. it's, uh, you know, we can walk through lightly with little luggage, ready to imagine another world and ready to fight for it. Yeah. So when you, when yeah. you think about sitting in isolation and thinking and, and reading, it's about replenishment. How am I, you know? How am I bringing myself back into this world, um, ready to do the battles? Do you know what I mean? And what an extraordinary gift, actually, in some ways. And what a privilege for people like us to have that opportunity to do that. Like, we are, the world has been divided right now. There are those of us who can do that and those of us who are working harder than they've ever worked before, saving lives. We have to, we have to just embrace this opportunity to embrace the privilege, like, and just, yeah, not 
because it does just like engaging with fear, like you were saying, like it's just, it's not productive, it's not helpful. So can I ask you one last question before we jump off? Yeah. I'm fear of me. I'm seizing the initiative. Mm -hmm. when, when we get back to the world of making plays, of gathering people in, 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 in spaces so that they can commune with themselves and, and commune and feel others in the space with them, mm -hmm. is there a play that you go, I really want to do. Now, I know you're a new play man. I know you're brilliant <laughs> on the new play. So you, 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 can just, you can just say a new play. But is there uh, a new play that doesn't yet exist? But is there a play that you go, when I come back, I really want to do it? Well, I, had, I was getting ready for Richard II this summer. And it's not a play that I knew before. Um, I didn't know it at all, actually, before Oscar and I uh, you know, talked about it. And now I just really want to fucking do that play. Like, I'm so ready to do that play because I wrestled with it. I solved it. I figured out how to do it. And I just like, it just feels so, um, you know, so at this moment in time, I'm just itching to get back in the ring with that play. I think I just want to do something that is filled with joy. Yeah. When I... Yeah, when we come out of this, I want to dance, I want to sing, I want the audiences to be smiling from the moment that the show kicks off to the end. Yeah. I think that's, that's the art that I, yeah. I, 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 want, I want to indulge in.